in the year 2020, the virus COVID-19 worldwide pandemic, there was a lot of misunderstanding about how this virus worked and a lot of fear that our bodies weren't going to be able to handle it. But in reality, okay, we are super tough. It takes a lot to kill a human. We have all these different defenses, so we'll just start with the basically the skin, epithelium. It's going to block most everything. Okay, I know some come in through our airway, but the skin is loaded with um, bacteria. For example, lactobacillus. In the vagina, it it produces an, it produces an acidic environment, so that bacteria just can't survive there, unless someone goes on. Um, antibiotics and then they get a candida infection because their lactobacillus numbers are down respiratory tract okay this is where COVID has a hard time because we have these hair like cilia and they're gonna sweep a lot of the debris that we're gonna swallow now cilia also has mucus you can see little strings of it and a lot of people are grossed out by mucus but it is loaded with different enzymes such as the lysozyme. And so it not only traps foreign invaders, but it uh, destroys them. Now one of the problems with smoking, okay, is that is a lot of the tar and the other compounds, they're gonna change the shape of the cilia, they become twisted, and the lining of the airway gets like, like skin, okay? And then people have to cough. <laughs> and it's the coughing sometimes that destroys the lungs. I mean, the chemicals from cigarettes are bad, but the coughing, just the pressure of coughing. Continuing with the skin, you know, the, the outer layers is called the epidermis, and sheet after sheet, it gets surrounded by a keratin protein, and it dies. So our, our skin, the skin surface is like a desert. It's scaly, and almost nothing can survive there. Dermis is under the epidermis, so here it is. And we have lots of substances like sebum formed in the sebaceous gland, it's going to leak through a neck to the surface, and so we have this oil that also provides a barrier. It waterproofs us, and it keeps our skin supple. I mentioned lysozymes. They're in tears, saliva, uh, most body fluids that are involved with defenses. Urine has a low pH. We don't even think about these things. Mucus, so in our GI tract, gastrointestinal, we have these specialized mucus cells. They're called goblet cells. And so let's say you eat something that's, you know, unhealthy, like it's got bacteria in it. That's when you get diarrhea. And we often think diarrhea is a bad thing, but it's a good thing because it flushes out those pathogens. Hydrochloric acid, HCl. So you can eat something that's kind of rotting and may, maybe not get sick because you have powerful acids. Uh, the acids are so strong, you know, they could dissolve uh, part of your genes. Okay, <laughs> that's how powerful it is. Okay, let's go to the second line because I talked about epithelium. Now we have something called innate. And with innate, it it just attacks everything. That, the word for that is non-specific. So, you know, splinters, bacteria, viruses, it don't matter. Whatever doesn't belong in our body, it's going to destroy. There's COVID right there. The lymphatic, you know, everyone knows what blood vessels are, but they don't know about this parallel flow of lymphatic vessels. Okay, so throughout your body are these lymphatic um, yeah, vessels that have lymph nodes every so often with some white blood cells in there. And anything that doesn't belong in our body is going to be trapped in lymph nodes and destroyed. We hope, okay, it's not a perfect system. White blood cells just, they hang out in there and destroy everything. Sometimes a cancer cell or virus escapes. Macrophage, I like that word because macro means big. Phage means eating. So these are big white blood cells. We produce millions of them uh, every year of our life. And they consume everything. And they also release a substance called cytokine. And you're going to see that word again. Cytokine is like it revs up our immune system, gives us fevers, and makes everything happen really fast. There's also these proteins, and that's why I made this drawing here. An antigen is something that is foreign. It attacks our body. And we tag it with this 
protein called the complement protein and it forms a tube and we can send toxins through that tube All right, can you imagine that I mean we're poking holes in this tough antigen you see we're built to survive now when an antigen is coated with a lot of these proteins uh, it doesn't show up really well here. here I mean here's a common example so that's a COVID virus when it's covered in complement proteins then the macrophage can just suck it up and destroy it and that happens man you know mucus when you have a cold and you have that yellowish mucus a lot of that's just macrophages you know that's your own cells they fought this battle and they've just died I mean they don't always die but a lot of that mucus during infection it is the good guys that are dying okay mast cells they produce histamine and histamine is going to make our blood vessels leaky and we want that to happen right like when you get a cold and you get all stuffed up that's exactly what you want you want your nasal uh, cavity flooded with all kinds of fluids I know it's unpleasant and the advertisements tell us to take cold medicine but if you take cold medicine and you stop the histamine action that means the virus is going to go into your lungs so just be there with that stuffy nose just you know let let the boogers run uh, you'll get you'll heal faster okay also um, the histamines cause fever and they cause this cytokine release which you know it, it makes our body so hot that sometimes the pathogen pathogen means you know foreign disease causing thing it makes it too hot for them and so a fever can be a good thing but if it goes over 104 then we really start getting worried especially with a child because you know the smaller the body it's like a puddle of water you know a shallow puddle of water heats up too fast but an adult body we can handle some fever cytokine storm that was a problem with COVID and I'll, I'll, t I'll get to that so, Dendritic cells. I like this word because dendro means tree, and they have all these tree-like uh, branches for grabbing the antigen. Okay, when I use the word antigen, think of foreign body like a virus or bacteria. And the dendritic cells are like a they're like a switch, a light switch, because they're going to I like this picture here. They're going to turn on the next stage, which is called the adaptive, and that's when we really kick things into high gear. A little review here. First lines of defense, you know, skin and linings, cilia, those are the hairs. Skin, dermis, okay, that's with the sebaceous gland. I talk about lysozymes and mucus, and tears, goblet cells to flush out our body with diarrhea. Diarrhea can be a good thing. Innate immunity, okay, this is where I talked about some of those cells like the macrophages, lymphatic system, which is kind of like blood vessels, but it has lots of white blood cells and um, nodes lymphatic nodes cytokines remember that so that's kind of a fever producing along with histamine those two work together to rev up our immune system okay, edema is when we flood um, an area with fluids so your stuffed up nose example of edema mast cells are going to get us cooking so we can fight back dendritic is the on switch for the next stage.